Here we have another example of how we calculate the energy release in a reaction. So here we have a reaction where we take what we call diborane, it's also called boron hexahydride, and we mix it with chlorine gas and we end up with boron tetrachloride and hydrochloric acid in gaseous form. So a lot of heat is released, putting that into a gaseous form. The enthalpy of this reaction is 1,396 kilojoules. It's a minus, that means it's an exothermic reaction. So now they give us the two reactants. We have diborane and we have chlorine gas, and they give us the amount in terms of liters. Now these are gases, and so gas takes up a lot of volume at STP conditions especially. It's not under pressure. And so if we're given that amount of diborane and that amount of chlorine gas, we need to figure out which of the two is the limiting reagent. So we're going to work this problem out both ways. First, assuming that boron, I mean the diborane, is the limiting reagent and the second time we're going to do it as if chlorine is uh, the limiting reagent see which one releases the least amount of energy because the one that releases the least amount that would then be the limiting reagent we have the standard equation here energy release is equal to the energy release in a reaction that's like the negative of the delta h times the reaction divided by the number of moles of the reactant we're dealing with and then times the mass of the reactant divided by the molar mass of the reactant and that will give us the energy released all right so let's plug in the numbers first we're going to deal with diborane so oh but wait a minute here this equation is set up to deal with mass and there we are given liters so how are we going to do that so we have to convert from liters to mass hmm now let's see here if i remember right at STP conditions, the volume um, of one mole of gas is equal to 22.4 liters. So that's the standard volume for all gases. STP conditions, all gases take up a volume of 22.4 liters. So based upon that, we should be able to figure out how many moles of each gas that we have. So the number of moles, the number of moles of the gas is equal to the number of liters that we have, so that would be in this case for diborane 2.5 liters divided by the 22.4 liters per mole. So here we take the number of liters that we have of the gas and divide it by the number of liters per mole, which gives us the number of moles. So with a calculator, so this of course would be for diborane, so B286. For this, we'll get 2.5 divided by. 22.4 and it gives us hmm, 0 0.1116 moles. I probably don't need that many significant figures but might as well put it on there. And then for the other element we have chlorine gas. For chlorine gas the number of moles is equal to the number of liters that we have which is 5.65 liters divided by 22.4 liters per mole well, that's easy it's the same for all gases and so 5.65 divided by 22.4 which means we have 0 0.2522 moles of chlorine gas so now that we have the number of moles we're going to need the mass hmm because it's the mass of reactant divided by mass per mole so let's go over here and here we have the molar mass for that borane, borane and the molar mass for chlorine gas. Remember, chlorine gas is a diatomic molecule. So if we not multiply or if we take yeah, the number of moles times the mass per mole, then we have the mass of each. So for diborane, B286, if we want to know the mass, mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied times the mass per mole. Notice then the moles cancel out and we're left with mass. So for diborane, the number of moles that we have is 0 0.116, oh, one to a few months, 1116 moles times the molar mass, which is 27.67 grams per mole, and 0.1116 times. 27.67 equals, and that gives us 3.088 grams. So for diborane, when they tell us that we have 2.5 liters in gas form of diborane, that really means we have 3.08 grams of diborane. 
And we can do the same for chlorine gas. The mass is equal to the number of moles. We, let's see, number of moles we got is right here, 0 0.2522 moles. And we multiply times the molar mass, which is 70.9 grams per mole. All right, let's do that calculation. So we have 0 0.2522 times 70.9 equals, that means we have 17.88 grams of chlorine gas, and that's was 3.08 grams of diborane, B286. There we go. All right, so now we have the number of moles of each gas and the number of grams of each gas, so now we're ready to solve the problem. Energy released. So let's start with diborane first. Energy released is equal to the enthalpy change of the reaction times the negative, of course, because remember, ent enthalpy change is always negative when the energy is released. So energy released would be 1,396 kilojoules for each reaction. Multiply times one reaction divided by the number of moles of the reactant. All right. So... Uh, in each reaction, how many moles of diborane do we have? It looks like one mole. All right, so one mole of B286. Multiply that times the mass of the reactant. And the mass of the reactant we got here, which is 3.088 grams uh, of diborane divided by the mass per mole. So the mass per mole right here is 27.67 grams, so 27.67 grams of diborane per one mole of diborane. And with all this, we will figure out the energy released by this reaction when we're limited to 2.5 liters of diborane, assuming we have as much as we want of the other gas, the chlorine gas. All right, let's figure this out. So 1396 uh, times 1 over 1 times 3.088 and divided by 27.67 equals, and that says here 155.8. So this is equal to 155.8 kilojoules of energy released. So E released is equal to this many kilojoules. All right. Now, we'll do this again with the chlorine gas. If it's more, then diborane is a limiting reagent. If it's less, then chlorine is a limiting reagent. So let's find out. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Aren't you getting excited about what the answer will be? All right, let's see. So energy released. Now we're going to use the chlorine gas. So Cl2, the chlorine gas. Here we have used diborane. So Energy release in reaction is the same, either way, so 1,396 kilojoules per reaction. And we multiply that times the reaction times the number of moles we need of that particular element, in this case, well, or that particular molecule. We need six moles, where were we? Right here, six moles of chlorine gas. So we have one reaction and six moles of Cl2. All right, now the mass of the of the chlorine gas, and the mass was 17.88 grams, so we have 17.88 grams of chlorine gas divided by the molar mass, and the molar mass of chlorine gas is 70.9 70, 70 grams, so divided by 70.9 grams of chlorine gas divided by one mole of chlorine gas. I say, well, why do I do all that? Well, remember, that in this case, we have reaction cancel out reaction, moles of chlorine gas cancel out mole of chlorine gas, and grams of chlorine gas divided by grams of chlorine gas. And all we have left is kilojoules, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for the energy released. So 1396 divided by 6 times 17.88 and divided by 70.9 equals, in this case, we have an answer of 58.7. So this is equal to 58.7 kilojoules. Now notice that this is a smaller number than the energy released by the diborane. So energy released, 58.7. So it looks like in this case that the chlorine gas is the limiting reagent. So that means that the maximum energy released will be 
58.7 kilojoules because by then all of the chlorine gas will be used up and none of the remaining diborane gas can be uh, consumed in the reaction to give off more heat. So the answer is 58.7 kilojoules.